So, Heinemann Higher, exercise 1 on the straight line, question 6 this time. Now, question 6, there's no diagram for question 6, it's not the end of the page, but the whole of question 6 depends on your visualisation of it. So a diagram would be important here. It describes a parallelogram, it gives the coordinates of two points and the equations of its two diagonals. So you just well get a sketch of this. So it says, P is the point zero 04, just put that anywhere. It's perfectly fair to draw a sketch to illustrate the connections between and the relationships between points and lines, as long as you don't have it accurate, so then you just read things off. And S is 6, 7, so I'll be further along and further up, so I'll put S about here. S is 6, 7. The equation of the diagonals of Y equals 7, I'll put this in red. Well, that's up at 7, and Y equals 7 means the line of constant y, so that's a horizontal line. So there'll be a horizontal line along here, y equals 7, and it's got 2y, the other diagonal is this, 2y equals 3x plus 8, I better rearrange that, 3 upon 2x plus 4, in the form of y equals mx plus c. So it cuts at 4, which is this point here, and it's got a gradient of 3 upon 2. So you can either read that as for every two along you go up three, or for every one along you've got one and a half, up one and a half, so it's sort of steepish. So they cross here. And what does it say first of all? Find the coordinates of the centre of symmetry of the parallelogram P, so it must be PQRS. Well the centre of symmetry means, well the parallelogram has got half turn symmetry. So the centre of symmetry will be where the two diagonals cross. So that'll be the first part. So, the centre of symmetry, n. Well, I've got these two equations so far. I've got y equals 7, I'll call that 1, and I've got 2y equals 3x plus 8, I'll call that 2. So the centre of symmetry, <coughs> the intersection of the diagonals, will be substitute 1 in 2. Well, that means that I'm going to have equation 2, 2 times whatever y is going to be replaced with, which is a 7, is going to be 3x plus 8. And that's easy. 3x equals 8 away from 14 is 6. 3x is 6, so x equals 2. And you already know that y is 7. <coughs> which means that the point n is 2, 7. So n is the point, I'll put it there, 2, 7. <coughs> Or maybe she'd write it out the way the question was asked for. Centre of symmetry, 2, 7. I'll just leave it like that, see if writing that out. Now, part B was, what's the coordinates then of Q and R? Well, it described the, tri the parallelogram as P, Q, R, S. So they've got to follow cyclically one after the other. So it must be P, Q, R, S. And opposite sides are parallel. So I've got P, S, and then P, Q, R, S. Now, one of the features of our <coughs> parallelogram is, since it's got half-turn symmetry, this distance from the centre to S must be the same distance from the centre to its opposite point. So that'll be Q there. Same here. Whatever that distance is, that must be the same. That must be R up there <coughs> to form the parallelogram. Oops, that's not drawing, drawing very well. Now, to find these two points, you don't need to use the equations of lines. That would take forever. You could do, you could find the equation of that line. You could find all sorts of things, but that's not necessary. All you need to do in this case is stepping stones. And you haven't done vectors yet, but it's just a case of saying, how much would you have to go to move from P to N? Take the same steps to go from N to R. And that doesn't mean the distance in to do with distance direction. It's simply how many along, how many up. Just steps along, steps up. I'll do Q first of all, because that's easier, that's horizontal. So for, for part B, I want to find Q. Well, going from S to N. I'll just put a wee note here. I want to go from S to N. I don't want the length of SN. I just want how to move. So that's a little arrow would signify that. What's the move that's necessary to go from S to N? Well, it's just a horizontal movement. N's at 2, S is at 6, they're both at the same height, so all I've got to do is go 4 back. Later on when you do vectors, there's a simpler way of writing that. That means that that's the same as going from N to Q. That's also 4 back. 
If it's four bank to get to there and it's the same on both sides, it must be four bank to get to there, which means I can find Q from N. So to get Q, I would start with N's coordinates, which are two, seven, and then just add whatever moves necessary. Well, it's only go four back. It's go four back, but don't go any up or down. So Q is going to be the point, negative two, seven. Just following the horizontal and vertical steps. Same with R. I'm not going to use the equations of lines here because I've got these equal moves. To get to R from N is the same as going from P to N. So I'll put that down. How do I go from P to N? That's what I would start. Start at P and go to N. I don't want the length. The little R means the move. Well, how many along? How many up? To go from P to N. Well, that's at zero and that's at two for the X coordinates. So it's two along. And that's at four for its height and that's at seven. So it's three up. Which means that's the same move as going from N to R. So that's the same as NR. Which means to get to R, I would start at N, which was um, 2, whoops, 7, and then just add those moves onto it. N's at 2, 7, R's further on, it's 2 further along and 3 further up. So plus 2, plus 3. So R's going to be the point 4, 10. That's all that's needed in these cases. I'm not using the equations of the lines, they're just using steps. How much does it take to get from one place to another? And then do the same again. Right, that's question six.